Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. It is going to be a quicker than usual video today I'm afraid. Uh, can't be helped, I do have a very very busy day ahead of me. I'm heading down to the White Military and Heritage Museum where we're taking part in the first FE3805 Open Restoration Day. Hope to see many of you there helping to get this thing back into working order. Also, I felt that I should address some of the frame rate issues that you've been seeing on some of my videos recently. Believe it or not, I am not actually deliberately rendering videos in terrible frame rates and horrible pixelated resolutions. Trust me, I'm not doing anything different, and yet some videos that I upload look fantastic, and others using exactly the same render settings and file formats and bit rates and frame rates look terrible. They look like they've been rendered at 10 frames per second. Tuesday and Wednesday's videos, Armored Warfare and Star Citizen, both looked great and had good, solid, steady frame rates. Two videos uploaded on Thursday, both of them World of Tanks, both looked terrible, as if they'd been rendered at 10 frames per second. Friday's video, World of Warships, more of the same. Again, looked like they've been rendered at 10 frames per second. This video, well, I have no idea what it's going to look like by the time YouTube have finished messing around with it, but I can guarantee you that tomorrow's video looks fantastic, because I pre-uploaded it a couple of days ago. It's just a World of Warships replay contest announcement video, and it looks great. And every single one of these videos were rendered and uploaded using exactly the same settings, and it's only after YouTube has finished processing them that some of them, not all of them, have ended up looking absolutely terrible. I can only guess that YouTube are once again messing around with their video processing software, and for some reason it's just picking certain videos that I upload and not others, and making a complete mess out of them. So, I do apologise, even though it's not my fault, um, but there's absolutely nothing I can do about it. But anyway, enough about that. Back to today's video. This first replay comes courtesy of Incognito Gun. This is him in the ARL V39. It is a pretty terrible tank destroyer. Although it does get a very nice 90mm gun. This is not that 90mm gun. I think this is the 105mm gun. Still, the 105 isn't terrible either. But this replay isn't really about Incognito Gun and the ARL V39. This is about his entire team. Because you're going to see things happen in this video. Well, I wouldn't say you never see them happen in World of Tanks, but they happen very, very rarely. And you never see it when an entire team behaves the way this team does. He scored a hit on the Churchill there. Artillery's taking a punt. And misses, which is always nice. That's not a Churchill, that's a Comet. Uh, <laughs> Jingles strikes again. Things are about to go horribly, horribly wrong. As I said, this isn't really about Incognito Gun or the ARL V-39. It's all about his team. And this is where things first go wrong. And you don't get the reaction that you expect to get when you're playing World of Tanks or any online multiplayer game. Pay attention to the Jackson behind him. Here we go. It's about to happen. Terrible firing off on these French tank destroyers. There you go, he's hit, and... Hang on, that shot came from behind him. He just got team killed by the Jackson. So you all know what happens next from bitter experience. The ARL V-39 starts screaming at the Jackson for being a noob, and demands that everybody on both teams report him for being a team killer, right? Not this time. All Incognito Gun does is draw a little unhappy face in chat. Oh. And then the Jackson apologises profusely for accidentally team killing him. And then he tells the Jackson not to worry about it. It was probably my own fault because I backed into your shot. This is not World of Tanks. Well, all right, Jingles. So they were two nice chilled out dudes, but two nice chilled out dudes does not a whole team make. Ha! <laughs> Wait a second. Wait until you see what the rest of the team gets up to. Here's his platoon mate in what looks like a stock Cromwell begging for help against the Tiger P. Unbelievably, he gets it. <laughs> well, alright. Not particularly earth-shattering, but trust your Uncle Jingles. This team was just fantastic. Up at the back of the map, we've got a Yang Tiger 88 on perilously low health, and a T-150 going up against an AMX-48. We're going to chop to them. There they are. The Yang Tiger 88 is now one-shot kill. The T-150 is in a good position behind the wreck of that M6 but his tracks are down. He's just gotten his tracks back up, 
AMX 48 obviously wants to eliminate that Yag Tiger 88 as soon as possible. Watch the T-150. Watch this. He's not blocking him. He's protecting him from the AMX 48. What? <laughs> What's going on? This doesn't happen in random battles. Certain, this sort of thing certainly doesn't happen twice in one game. The 48 got outflanked and killed from behind. Watch this AT-7. There's a friendly Lerva with him, but he's trying to negotiate his way around that rock so he can come around behind this 112. Even the 112 can't miss the commander's hatch of the AT-7 from that kind of range. And he's got him, but he's completely stuck. Now, what do people driving Lervas normally do in these kind of circumstances? They call you a noob, they laugh at you, and they drive off. But not this guy. No, because it was just that kind of team. Meanwhile, in chat, the Tiger 88 is thanking the T-150 for sacrificing all of that health in order to keep him in the match, and everybody's commenting on what a nice guy the Lerva driver is. All of these chilled out righteous dudes on the same team, at the same time, in an online multiplayer game, what the hell is going on? The game's not completely arsehole free, of course, but they're all on the enemy team. It's like Yin and Yang suddenly decided to queue up for a game of World of Tanks. The 112 called his team a bunch of shits. Uh, <laughs> and, well, scumbags are going to be scumbags, aren't they? But this one doesn't get away with it, thanks to a totally worth it epic suicide cliff dive from Incognito Gun's platoon mate in the Cromwell. In our next video, you're going to see some stuff that you don't see every day in a game of World of Tanks. And something that you do see every day in World of Tanks, the MT-25 driver on this team. I don't know what it is about MT-25 drivers. I've had a number of replays submitted to me over the course of the last couple of weeks, and every single time there's an MT-25 in the match, they're a complete arsehole. This one, no exception whatsoever. He started off this match in fine tradition by telling not just everybody on his team, but everybody on the enemy team as well to go forth and multiply. So, yeah, nice guy. And then he immediately follows that one up by telling everybody on both teams that the Lorraine on his team has been reported for being a chat spammer because he posted a quick clan recruitment message in battle chat. So, you know exactly what you're dealing with with this MT-25 driver. And of course, that's all the encouragement that everybody else needs to all start laying into each other. None of this, of course, is unusual. This happens in just about every random battle you or I have ever played. Well, except for the one that I've just shown you. Anyway, Rowan Heck here in the AMX 1390. Uh, while events are unfolding up here, by the way, uh, you may wish to amuse yourself with what's going on in chat. Rowan Heck in the 1390 and a lone AMX 30 are the only two friendly tanks up at this end of the map. Rowan Heck hidden in the bushes coming over the opposite ridge, a T-54, a T-54E1, and a T-44, and those are just the ones that we can see. They can see the AMX-30, they can't see Rowan Heck. The 30 is getting absolutely pummeled, and there's another one just popped up over the ridge line, and he's dead. Rowan Heck is shitting his pants. Meanwhile, the AMX-30, are you just going to sit there and watch me die? Yep, <laughs> you're damn right I am. I am not popping out of this bush with this lot less than 100 metres away from me. It would have been suicide. Not one of them knows he's here. <laughs> Watch this. You can see which of these guys have got six sets and which ones don't, because they're all... Oh no, I'm spotted. What's going on? <laughs> Look at this. How can they see me? <laughs> T-54B all, ah, whatever, I'm going to go for it anyway. It would, of course, be nice, while Rowan Heck is sitting here lighting all these guys up, if there was anybody on his team in a position to shoot them. But, well, well, the tanks, isn't it? So, no, of course there isn't. The T-54 has managed to get all the way across this field, spotted the entire distance without being hit once, until he's practically into the enemy base. And here go the rest of them. And there we go, somebody's literally just this second hit the T-54 for the first time. But here's where things start getting cheeky. Watch as all these guys just file past the 1390 here. And he just waits for them to get beyond about 420 metres range. And let me see. T25-2 first, I think. A couple of the team are actually reacting and coming back to do something about this rush. And these guys are now getting hammered. And look at that. 475 metres. There's no way that T25 knows who's hitting them. 
Two shots left, make them count. Go for the T-54E1, highest tier vehicle after all. Magazine expended. Not one of them saw him the entire time he was sitting in that bush, just counting tanks driving past. Rowan Heck, you either have nerves of absolute steel, or you're an abject coward who was too terrified to move as, <laughs> as those four enemy tanks rolled right past you. But either way, it seems to have worked out quite well for you. And he was absolutely right in what he said to the AMX-30. Yes, I am going to sit here and watch you die, because if I move out of this bush, I'm dead too. And dead tanks don't spot any enemy tanks, and they don't kill any enemy tanks. It's all about keeping your gun in action. Well, Rowan Heck in the 1390 hangs around for a few more seconds to see whether or not his team need him to go back and help deal with all those enemy tanks that just sailed right past him, but they pretty much have it under control, so instead, with a full magazine loaded, he goes looking for artillery. Only the one artillery on each team, so he knows that he can kill whatever it is he comes across. Oh, Rheimatal Borsig spotted. Now, he doesn't know if he got spotted because he doesn't have six cents on the 1390, but there's the GW Type of P, and two shots are going to kill him. The Borsig is... Well, this is another spot of luck, isn't it? <laughs> the Borsig's AFK. Because you don't have enough ammunition in an AMX 1390 to kill a full health Rheimatal Borsig and a full health GW Tiger P with the, just the one reload. So I think it's fairly safe to say that if you've had a shitty run of luck in World of Tanks over the course of the last couple of days, it's because Rowan Heck in the AMX 1390 has been using all of your luck. Free damage, just as soon as his gun reloads. <laughs> What's he doing? Oh, you cheeky bugger, you're not. Look, look at this. Uh, <laughs> stop playing with your food. Yes, Rowan Heck is now demonstrating how you can get a ram kill on a Rheimatal Borsig tank destroyer in an AMX 1390 light tank while only taking three, count them, three points of damage. Well, now he's just showing off, isn't he? And there's the Rheimatal Borsig's platoon mate who is not AFK. Not that it really matters, because Rowan Heck now has about six metres of armour on the front of his tank. <laughs> oh, where did he go? Come on. Binos and camo net up. No, he's too far away, he's not going to see him. So, anyway, Rowan Heck in the AMX 1390. The world's luckiest light tank driver. Well, anyway, our final replay comes to you courtesy of Blake Blackwater in the American Tier 5 medium tank. The M4 Sherman is here on the Winter Ruenberg map, and he's being issued some instructions there by a member of his team going by the name of General Patton Rommel Allied. Now, there's a man who lives in a perpetual state of confusion, if ever I saw one. <laughs> who? What? Anyway, doesn't matter. Well, anyway, Blake and a friendly crusader head up to the crossroads on the far eastern end of the map. Now this is Winter Ruinberg, it's in counter mode, therefore the flag, as you can see on the map, is all the way over in the centre of town on the far western side of the map. So whatever they're going to do up here, they can't afford to hang around. They have to do it fast. And there's an M3 Lee, and he is about to get rebalanced by friendly artillery for daring to camp right at the front of the map. <laughs> and uh, there's one hit, and bang, there it goes. The Lefer Scores his first kill of the game. Oh! Enemy artillery tries to rebalance uh, <laughs> Blake here for daring to camp at the front of the map as well. And an enemy M4 Sherman. Also, th these damn camping medium tanks, eh? <laughs> the Lefer is now on two kills. Because that's what artillery's for, isn't it? So discouraging camping. Yeah, right. Anyway. But things are actually going quite well. They're winning 3-1. They've only lost one tank. And then, of course, I open my big mouth. And the look snails himself at Churchill. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing, but I do love it when, well, big stupid heavy tanks get themselves killed by tiny little cute tanks. Like the looks. However, they are now being capped. Blake can't hang around all day playing with his Ram 2. He is in a tier 5 tank, after all. And this is a tier 5 game. The scores are now 3-4. The Crusader evens it by finishing off the Ram 2. Blake narrowly avoids not once, but twice, getting rebalanced by the enemy artillery for being a dirty camping medium tank at the front of the map. 
And now, speak another map, take a look. They're being capped, the cap counter is up to 45. Over 50, and the closest friendly tanks to the cap are Artillery and a Matilda. It's time for somebody to do something spectacular. He does not take the shortest direct route straight down the central road to the flag, because the rest of his team are heading that way, and the enemy team already have their guns pointing in that direction. He does not hang around to kill, to farm a Pascucci's medal on all three of the artillery that he spots on this corner. Instead, he just auto-aims at the SU-5 and keeps going. He does actually kill the SU-5, but he doesn't hang around to kill the other two. He throws away a Pascucci's medal in order to get his ass down this road and into that cap circle. He did, of course, get spotted by the artillery on the way in. One of them tried to shotgun him. So anybody on the enemy team in the cap circle who is paying attention to the map is going to know that he's on his way. And watch this. OI Experimental. Might not get another shot on the side of the tank like that, so he takes it. Does not stop to kill the OI Experimental. Instead, hits the A20. He's now reset the cap on two of them. Finishes off the OI Experimental. Next most dangerous tank and the easiest to kill was the Stug. So he takes him out and now he can afford to take his time with the A20. The cap has been reset. He is an absolute hero. Oh, enemy Sherman behind him. Takes a hit. Jams his turret ring. Hides behind the OI Experimental's wreck. Avoids the second shot from the enemy M4. Can't repair his turret ring. He's already used his repair kit. Here comes the Crusader. Oh, artillery behind him. Looking for revenge. <laughs> his turret ring's still jammed. He's just missed him. Turret ring's repaired, puts one shot into him, and while he's waiting for the second shot, the enemy M4 Sherman suicides into the side of his tank, presenting him with his fourth and final kill. Blake Blackwater, ladies and gentlemen, in the M4 Sherman on the Winter Ruenberg map. What an absolute hero. Well, that's all I have time for today. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. In a massive break with tradition, however, there will be a video tomorrow. I don't normally upload a video on a Sunday, but tomorrow is special because I'm running a World of Warships replay contest in order to celebrate the launch. See what I did there? Launch. Get it? Yeah. <laughs> that was a terrible joke. Uh, the launch of World of Warships. It's finally gone live. Uh, I'm running a replay contest. Full details in tomorrow's video. Uh, I've got a bunch of premium ships to give away, courtesy of Wargaming. Check out tomorrow's video for what you have to do in order to stand a chance of winning one of them, including a Tier 8 Premium Tirpitz Battleship, four Diana-class Soviet cruisers, and one Mikasa Japanese battleship. Full details in tomorrow's very, very short World of Warships replay contest video. In the meantime, folks, take care, and I'll catch you next time.